Can you imagine a hypersonic airplane landing on an American aircraft carrier? If your answer is no, I'm sorry to say that you're wrong, because today a hypersonic fighter jet can do it. This is a real breakthrough that expands the boundaries of military aviation. We know all the secrets and details of how the engineers managed to create something like this, as well as the difficulties they faced and even what they ended up with. Hypersonic aircraft conquer the ocean. Let's look at what hypersonic aircraft are and why they're so important in modern warfare. Imagine a plane that flies faster than 3,700 miles per hour, which is about five times faster than the speed of sound. These machines can instantly appear anywhere and strike even before the enemy realizes what's happening. But they are not that simple. Hypersonic engines for aviation are big. Their size is usually twice that of simple supersonic engines, and the aircraft are therefore large. Now imagine that this hypersonic behemoth needs to land on an aircraft carrier. This is a very difficult task because it needs to hit a small platform on a moving ship with precision. The slightest mistake will lead to disaster. If we talk about supersonic aircraft, the situation seems better because the F-35 can easily take off and land on an aircraft carrier. This is largely due to the ideal size of the fighter jet, with a length of 49 feet and a wingspan of 32 feet, it has enough space to land on the deck of an aircraft carrier. However, with its Pratt & Whitney F-135 engine, the fighter is only capable of reaching 1180 miles per hour, which is very slow. The F-35 uses far too much gas. It's lucky if it can hang around for an hour or an hour and a half at most. The maneuverability is laughable. What's the way out of this situation? Creating a compact hypersonic engine that'll achieve record acceleration. And such an engine has been developed. The Hermes company, together with the Lockheed Martin, created this masterpiece of engineering. The process of creating a hypersonic aircraft is a true art and science at the same time, as it starts with simple drawings and ends with the development of unique materials that can withstand incredible temperatures over 750 degrees Fahrenheit and loads of over 16 G that occur at such speeds. In addition, the pilots have to be trained to operate it all correctly. Everything has to be perfectly thought out and every one has to be perfectly trained. The Hermes did that. They created a completely unique GX-47 engine that has all the necessary characteristics, from compact size to stability and speed. For its part, the Lockheed Martin Company has been strengthening the F-35's hull. Engineers had previously reinforced the fighter jet, but this was not enough, so the accelerated aircraft had to be strengthened even more to enable it to withstand a speed of 3,700 miles per hour. Surprisingly, the weight of the fighter jet didn't change much, from 13.1 tons, it increased only to 14.6 tons. Thus, the airplane was assembled and ready to fly. The first test went as expected. The size of the F-35 and the length of the aircraft's carrier deck of 1,049 feet allowed it to accelerate and take off properly without any problems. But the main test was not takeoff, but landing. Will the updated F-35 be able to cope with this task? After all, it'll have to accelerate to the maximum hypersonic speed and then have time to slow down and land. The exciting moment came, and the pilot reached the required altitude of 49,200 feet and flew like a steel hawk. Gradually lowering his altitude, he slowed down, and immediately an aircraft carrier appeared on the horizon. It's difficult to react to anything at this speed, but there's too much at stake. The pilot concentrated all his attention, pointed the plane in the right direction, and suddenly reduced speed and altitude. Just a few seconds later, and the F-35 lands on the deck, breaking to a complete stop with the help of the aircraft carrier's reinforced hooks and cables. At this moment, the overload experienced by the pilot was comparable to that experienced by astronauts in a centrifuge about 32 G. But the mission was successful, and the hypersonic aircraft landed on a U.S. aircraft carrier. The mission of the airplane was to be half of what the Air Force called the high-low mix. It was an incredible feat that the U.S. Air Force and Navy accomplished. They managed to do something that no one else had ever done. In addition, the successful operation opened their eyes to some problems that needed to be solved. First, the design of the F-35, even after the upgrade, still proved to be not so reliable. At least the landing gear and body were subjected to a huge load during the landing, 
but the Lockheed Martin is already working on solving this problem by adding new components and more resistant materials. Secondly, the temperatures inside the plane reached 140 degrees Fahrenheit, so the developers will have to come up with a more efficient way to remove heat. The last problem was related to the pilot's training due to the insufficient number of test flights. Landing on an aircraft carrier, especially with an unusual aircraft, was much more difficult to accomplish. So in the near future, only a handful of pilots will be allowed to fly such fighters, only the best one. And perhaps the last aspect, with a full permissible load of 30 tons, the aircraft loses control more easily, so the number of weapons will have to be reduced from four missiles or bombs to three. The successful landing of this hypersonic aircraft is an important milestone in the development of this revolutionary technology and has profound implications for future military operations. Imagine being able to respond to new threats in minutes or collect critical information from anywhere in the world. This event demonstrates a significant step forward in the field of military aviation. The development of the GX-47 engine by Hermius and the adaptation of the F-35 by the Lockheed Martin showed the true privileges of a compact hypersonic engine. We were really building a fighter for the 21st century that could take on uh, all of the advanced threats. The successful test flight and landing of the hypersonic F-35 on an aircraft carrier not only confirmed the technical capabilities, but also opened up new horizons for military operations. In the future, hypersonic aircraft promise to revolutionize military strategy by opening up new horizons. Their introduction requires a revision of military doctrines and tactics, which emphasize the importance of ongoing research and development in this area. A new era of aircraft construction is approaching us at supersonic speed. This brand new aircraft, created in cooperation with NASA and Lockheed Martin, will transform our understanding of passenger transportation. Its bizarre shape will become familiar to everyone in the coming years, and its extraordinary technological capabilities are exactly the breakthrough that has been waiting for decades. More than 300 engineers worked to bring this airplane to life for good reason. Its speed is one and a half times faster than the speed of sound, and the project cost is $250 million. The Lockheed Martin X-59 is an experimental supersonic aircraft developed under the Low Boom Flight Demonstrator Program. The aim of this project is to create an aircraft capable of flying at supersonic speeds with minimal sound impact, which will reduce the negative impact on the environment and make supersonic flights more commercially attractive. It was the noise level and accidents of the X-59's predecessors that prevented this technology from taking a step forward. However, after years of neglect of supersonic passenger transportation, this aircraft gives hope for the future, fast, environmentally friendly, and cheap to maintain. As a leader in aeronautics research, NASA is working to reduce the sounds produced by aircraft. But let's get to the point. The engine noise of the X-59's predecessor was 110 decibels at takeoff alone, which is the loudest engine in the history of aircraft construction, while the safe volume for humans is only 70 so the developers had to do their best. When a supersonic aircraft flies over a town, a suburb, or a city, it will smash loose windows. Lockheed Martin, famous for its military developments, wants to prove that it can be useful to the civilian population as well. However, the development of the X-59 was not a cakewalk. It took seven years to design it. In 2015, the Lockheed Martin developed a concept for an airplane with a long, thin fuselage and a unique nose fairing. This design was aimed at minimizing the sound impact, or the so-called loud pop that occurs when the sound barrier is overcome. This aircraft must overcome the curse of sonic boom and become commercially successful. X-59 will be able to fly at supersonic speeds, faster than the speed of sound, without producing a loud sonic boom. The latest composite materials such as carbon fiber and titanium alloys were used in the project in areas of high load. In addition, the single piece design ensured the correct distribution of the load across the outer surface of the aircraft. The success of these ideas was encouraged by NASA and Lockheed Martin management. So the X-59 prototype began to be assembled at the Skunk Works plant. The most famous component we can find in this plant is undoubtedly the General Electric F414 GE100 engine, specifically modified for the X-59 project. 
It delivers 98 kilonewtons of power or 10 tons of thrust, which is slightly less than the turbofan engines used in air transportation and is used on the F-A-18EF Super Hornet fighter jets. This engine cannot yet be called commercial because the engine from a fighter jet that moved the weight of the weapon, pilot, and light airframe must now perform commercially successful missions at 1,100 miles per hour. Therefore, the engineers involved in the modernization of this engine faced a difficult task. We will know whether they succeeded or not very soon. In addition, design innovations alone are not enough to understand how this aircraft will behave in the air. To better study the prototype, a simulator was built to train future pilots. However, despite all the innovations and successes in the development, some people expressed doubts about the safety and efficiency of the aircraft. There were questions about whether it would really be able to significantly reduce the level of sound impact and whether there would be any problems during commercial operation. Therefore, the Lockheed Martin actively cooperates with local residents in the test areas, informing them about the goals and methods of testing to minimize negative reactions at the development stage. After NASA completes the flight tests, a flight will be conducted over several selected cities in the United States collecting information about the sound generated by the X-59 and how people perceive it. NASA will provide this data to the Federal Aviation Administration and international regulators. This may happen this year if the team overcomes certain difficulties. In fact, overcoming engineering problems was the basis for the construction of this aircraft. The most famous supersonic passenger airliner until recently was the Concorde. These aircraft have been in operation since the 1970s, transporting passengers from the United States to Europe across the Atlantic. Many pilots all over the world would, would have loved to, to fly the Concorde, but there were only a few of them. All 13 Concorde aircraft, despite the exorbitant cost of the flight, were unprofitable. But the costs were racking up all the time. People complained about the noise from their engines and flight safety was poor. This led to a flight ban in 2003. To circumvent this ban and create a better airliner than the Concorde, the Lockheed engineers had to modify the design of the aircraft. The cockpit does not have a front windshield, so the X-59 pilots will use the External Vision System technology, an external vision system that allows a camera to transmit images ahead of the aircraft to the screen in the cockpit. However, all technical innovations are nothing more than theory until the airplane takes to the skies. Flight tests before the all-important demonstration flight are the most interesting stage of development. Before taking to the skies, the pilot undergoes a series of checks and tests the external vision system once again. After making sure that all systems are fully operational, the airplane smoothly starts moving. The X-59 lifts off the ground so easily and quietly that at first glance it's difficult to tell about its supersonic capabilities. It looks more like a kite than a supersonic monster. The first stage of the flight is to check the main flight characteristics. The X-59 rises to altitude according to the flight plan and performs basic maneuvers. The next step is to test the control systems in the air. The pilot uses cameras and sensors for orientation, and this technology seems to work flawlessly. After these procedures, the most interesting part begins testing the supersonic mode. The tests take place away from residential areas so the pilots can safely overcome the sound barrier. It'll take 15 to 20 minutes to accelerate, just like the Concorde, due to the similar engine power. The sound impact gets quieter and quieter with each test. The process of speed reduction and landing is also clearly planned and regulated. After landing, another control check of all systems is performed in the process of eliminating problems, improving identified shortcomings, and preparing for the next flight begins. There will be many more such test flights before the aircraft is ready for presentation, so this project has a great future. The return of supersonic civil aviation will definitely be the technical event of the decade, as the level of technology and innovation implemented in this aircraft is amazing. Most aviation experts believe that in 2025 we'll have the first flights of this supersonic airliner. Despite this, there are skeptics who don't see ways to implement the X-59 at a sufficient level to lift the ban on supersonic passenger transportation. The price of tickets remains a separate issue. No forecasts have been announced yet, but we should expect a significant price reduction after the production of the aircraft and the total cost of the project. Overall, we can expect this model to take off in coming years, as no implementation milestone has been missed so far, 
and all technical plans are being implemented surprisingly quickly. Perhaps it was just time, and the NASA and Lockheed Martin engineers felt the wind of change perfectly. What do you think about this technology? Will the idea of supersonic passenger transportation be realized this time? Write your opinion in the comments. That's all for today, but if you're interested in the Lockheed Martin technology solutions, you can watch other videos about the equipment of this company on our channel. In addition, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss our new videos, and like this video please. See you soon.